Today we're going to look at lesson 9-1, which is actually rotational kinematics. So first of all, we have to remember there's four kinds of motion. There's linear motion, which we call translational. That's motion in a straight line. Then they are circular motion going in a circle. And then there's rotational, which is we're going to start today, which is spinning around an axis. And then we're going to do simple harmonic motion later on. So up until this point, right now we're just going to compare translational and rotational motion. So when we did translational, if something moved like this, it just went in a straight line. So what happened is we treated it like all the parts of the object moved together. And it's really kind of just like a single point. Whereas with rotational motion, if this, because this is a ball, it's actually going to roll and it's going to spin around an inertial axis of rotation. So all the parts of the objects are actually moving at different speeds. And this depends on the location within the object. So basically, the greater distance a part is from the axis of rotation, the faster it moves. Okay. So today's lesson is just a simple one. And if we look at the handout, we look at some of the things that I talked about. Translation, all parts move together. It's treated as a single point, whereas rotational, the object spins around an inertial axis. So, oh, this is kind of just what I said. So again, these are different. What we're going to do today is we're going to do angular kinematics. So we're going to look at all our kinematic equation and look at... Um, think about them being analogous to one another. Now, the thing that we have to know for rota rotational motion is theta is equal to 2 pi r, that's a distance around a circle, divided by r, so theta is 2 pi radians, and then theta is equal to pi over 180 degrees. And the reason that this is important, knowing that one revolution is 2 pi radians, which is uh, 360, is a lot of time, um, a lot of, many times on the physics C exam, they try to trick you with, like you'll do a problem and you'll get the answer in radians and then all the answers will be in meters per second. or some, I mean radians per second and then the answers will be in meters per second. So you, they, they always try to trick you on the conversions and I always fall for those. All right, if we look back here, so what we're going to do analogously is we're going to say, okay, before we had X, x is analogous to theta. Then we had v, velocity. This is omega. We had acceleration. Now we have alpha. So when we look at our equations, so for example, if we have x is equal to v naught t plus 1 half a t squared, that becomes theta is equal to omega naught t plus 1 half alpha t squared. If I have vf is equal to v naught plus a t, that becomes omega f is equal to omega naught plus alpha t, etc. Vf squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2ax. That becomes omega f squared is equal to omega naught squared plus 2 alpha theta. These are not the only ones that we're going to be looking at. So basically, everything that we learned in kinematics, everything, now we're going to be looking at rotationally. Okay, so we're going to learn all new symbols. But here's the trick. You're not learning all new equations. These are the same equations, just like for everything else as well, and just say, okay, theta is like S, omega is like V, alpha is like A. Okay? And that's it. So again, if we look back at the lesson... The key things, angular position is changes are measured in radians, so you have to remember, because sometimes they're not going to give you the, you know, they might give you words, and they might not give you exactly what something is in radians. And again, you're not memorizing all new equations. Think about your kinematic equations and know which variables are analogous, and that's about it. All right, so now we're going to pass out the homework, and we're going to do one of the homework problems. That's it.